Sea of Thieves is a game about cooperation and conflict working hand in hand. For some people, cooperation is not only preferable, but also profitable. And I'm not only talking about in-game gold, I'm talking about actual mother real life money. But we're not ready for that just yet. First, take a look at the pinnacle of cooperation. Having a fleet of friendly ships so you can give them a rousing speech about that pesky solo slooper on the horizon. There is a Reaper, and the Reaper is not too far from here. But the Reaper has a slight problem, which is to say, my colleague, who went with me, has taken all of the supplies off the Reaper's ship. It can't defend itself, oh. and it can't win. These players are in what's called an alliance, meaning they have raised a flag to team up together. Once alliance, you can see each other on the map, get 50% of loot turned in by other alliance crews, among other bonuses. Alliances are in fact great for the sandbox nature of Sea of Thieves. Not only do they encourage cooperation, but they set the stage for dramatic betrayals. Or, in my case, spending the rest of this video trying to sink their fleet one by one, all by myself while I blabber on about whatever vaguely related PvP topic I came up with this week. Did I mention they already sunk my ship and I can't respawn nearby if I die? Alliances sound great, and well, there aren't actually many problems with them. Mainly just one. One tiny issue. Unfortunately, this single issue has pretty extreme ramifications for the gold economy, new content, and some sketchy behavior outside of the actual game. That problem is Alliance servers. Now, what are Alliance servers? These are typically servers where every single ship on the server is allianced and sworn to work together, effectively removing the PvP threat, which is essential to the core gameplay loop of Sea of Thieves. These servers can farm gold and rep extremely fast. This has a massive ripple effect through a surprisingly large amount of systems in the game. The few gold sinks we have in the game, which are highly priced items to keep people needing gold, are obliterated through just a couple sessions in an efficient alliance. This means a new player can afford the most expensive item in the game, the Dark Adventurer sales, after only a couple Alliance server sessions. These sales are pretty controversial. If you want to hear more about that, check out my recent video on why these sales are actually one of the worst additions to Sea of Thieves. But back to the point, cosmetics are the only way to determine a player's skill before actually fighting them. But now, these highly valued items don't tell you nearly as much as they used to about a player because of this gold farming technique. Okay, let's talk new content. Any new content being developed by Rare is with the core intended gameplay loop in mind. This content might be intended to be more difficult, time consuming, or under the constant threat of PvP. None of these things apply on Alliance servers. Things the devs intend to take weeks or even months to complete can be absolutely smashed in only a couple sessions on an Alliance server. To be clear, I'm not trying to shame anyone that participates in these servers. Rare has not made any attempts to stop it thus far, so that's on them. I actually enjoy Alliance servers because when I do manage to get on them, it is the ultimate challenge in PvP to have an entire server against you as a solo pirate. I will say, however, that these servers don't just remove the carrot from the stick. They nuke the carrot, stick in the entire goddamn area. The quicker you unlock cosmetics, complete commendations, and earn items, the less likely you're going to want to play the game, which is bad for rare and bad for the game at large. Sorry guys, we gotta go, but we, we're done with this alliance. But that isn't even the start of it. There's something much bigger going on here. There are two types of alliance servers, organic and predefined. Organic alliances are fantastic. These are pirates who met randomly in game, teamed up and made friends with everyone on the server. This is a peak Sea of Thieves sandbox experience. It's an achievement in itself to convince that many pirates just to cooperate. The other less fantastic type or non-organic alliance servers. These are players who are in Discord calls together, jumping servers in large groups until they meet up, and then asking the remaining non-alliance players on the server to invite their friends to their crew so that they can take over. These are the servers that not only farm gold for hours and hours, but keep the servers up and active for ages as they rotate players in and out. Believe it or not, there are people out there who charge actual real life money for access to these servers. Yes, you heard that correctly. That presents a whole slew of other issues, which I won't get into, but I'm sure you can think of a couple on your own. All of this to me seems like it is in Rare's best interest to prevent these types of things from happening. 
The best change would be to cap the amount of alliances per server to something that is lower than the crew cap, which at the time of this video is currently five crews per server. This will leave space for one to two other crews to join the server and present the PVP threat back into the gameplay loop. I'm shaking. Before we finish up here, I did just launch a new YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, it is all of the dev vlogs and behind the scene footage I record for all of the projects I do on my stream. That info will be in the description of this video. But what do you think? Do you think Alliance servers should be allowed to exist or should Rare actually do something about it? Let me know in the comments. If you want to stay up to date on PvP news or just the general state of PvP within Sea of Thieves, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you want to try and get better at the game, I have a massive PvP tips playlist you can check out. I give away exclusive in-game items every Wednesday and occasionally have Twitch drops on my stream at twitch.tv slash blurbs, where I stream every weekday and most weekends. And lastly, we have an incredible Discord community if you want to hang out, talk games, and find people to play with. But besides that, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.